Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do some RLC combination circuits. So we've done series circuits, guys. We've done parallel circuits. Now we're going to look at combination circuits together. You can tell that this is a combination circuit because it has some series components in it and it also has some parallel components in it, okay? And you're lucky because all my combination circuits are gonna look very similar to this, okay? Where you've got a voltage, you've got a rung with a capacitor and a resistor, a rung with an inductor and a resistor, and then just a rung with a resistor in it alone. Now, if you recall back to level one and also to the circuits that you did in level two, in order to solve a combination circuit, you have to identify or simplify the circuit. So we're gonna, Take a look at these series rungs and simplify them slightly and then treat it as a parallel circuit okay now when i do combination circuits i always do them the exact same way okay so it's asking for a lot of information here all right guys but we're not going to worry about it for right now we're going to try to simplify this circuit then we'll come back and see if we can answer these questions so when I simplify this circuit, guys, I'm going to calculate four things about each one of these rungs. The first of the four is the impedance of the rung, then the current in the rung, guys, then um, impedance, current, oh yeah, phase angle of the rung, okay, guys, and then does the circuit lead or lag, okay? We're going to do that for this rung, we're going to do it for this rung, and then we're going to do it for this rung. So let's do this together, okay guys? Now we're taking a look at this first rung here. This is a series rung, and we're going to calculate the impedance of this rung. It is going to be the sum of these two, but it'll be the phasor sum of those two. So over here, just for fun, if I wanted to figure out the phasor sum of those two, I'd have R on the bottom. Okay, it's 10 ohms, right? And then I would have XC. Uh, we'd be comparing all these to the current here. So the current would have to lead. So that guy would be going straight down here. There would be XC, okay? And it is 40 ohms. And I'm showing you this, but guys, but maybe you won't have to do it. There's the impedance right there, right? So you can see by this rung here, that uh, the impedance is going to be 10 squared plus 40 squared, right? Square root 10 squared plus 40 squared equals square root equals. Looks like it is 41.23 ohms, okay? And, you know, maybe you could want to draw this for this rung. Maybe you don't need to. If you look at it, there's only going to be two components in there. So it's going to be 40 squared over 10 squared square root. This one's going to be 45 squared over 20 squared square root. So draw the phasor diagram if you want to, but I don't typically. But I wanted you guys to see that one. So the next thing we're going to do is calculate the current in that rung. Now the voltage across that rung is 208. So the current should be 208 over 41.23. Whoops. Right guys? Because, well, that's the Z, right? So 208 divided by that answer. Whoops. 208 divided by 41.23. Looks like it is 5.045 amps. All right. We'll calculate the angle. The phase angle of that guy is going to be opposite over adjacent. Inverse 10, I mean the angle's right there, right? And this is always going to be a right angle triangle. So is this one. Opposite over adjacent inverse tan. All I have to do is worry about which is the opposite and which is the adjacent. Well, the adjacent is always going to be the resistor. Okay, guys, so 40 over 10. 40 divided by 10 equals shift 10 equals. It's 75, guys, 75.96 degrees. Does this circuit lead or lag? Well, it leads. Why? because I can see it's leading right here. There's the current counterclockwise, but I'm not even gonna draw this most of the time, so how am I gonna know? Well, if it's got a capacitor in it, it's gonna lead, I guarantee you. If it's got an inductor in it, it's gonna lag, I guarantee you, all right? So resistor or in, uh, capacitor leads, inductor lags. Don't worry about it, just pick it. And we're gonna get into pretty soon why that's important. Okay, guys, so let's do the second 
rung here. Okay, so this is rung number two. The impedance is going to be, we'll go a little faster now, 45 over 20. No, it's not. 45 squared plus 20 squared equals root equals. Looks like that is 49.24 ohms. The current is going to be 208 over that. Okay, so it's going to be 208 divided by that answer. It's going to be 4.224 amps. All right, and uh, the phase angle, guys, opposite over adjacent, inverse tan, so it's gonna be 45 over 20. Uh, 45 divided by 20 equals shift tan equals 66.04 degrees. All right, and this one's gonna lag. And I know it's gonna lag because it's a inductor. All right, so last rung here, the 70 ohmer. This one's easy. Z is just 70 ohms, right? Because it's the only gadget in there. Uh, I is going to be E over Z. So it's going to be uh, two, oops, 208 divided by, oops, what am I doing? 208 divided by 70 equals, looks like it's 2.971 amps. The angle, guys, is going to be zero degrees. So why zero? Well, because it's a resistor, it's in phase. So I don't have to worry about whether the circuit leads or lags at all because it doesn't lead or lag. All right, guys, now, why did I figure this all out? Because if I'm gonna calculate the impedance of this circuit, I need to add these currents together to get the total circuit current. But I gotta add them up as phasers. Now, unfortunately for you guys, they don't make a nice right angle triangle anymore. They all got weird phase angles. So if I'm going to calculate the total circuit current in this particular guy, I've got to use the component method to add these three phasers together. Now, if you want to see what those phasers are going to look like, well, here's your little phaser world, okay? And I'm going to draw these phasers at their correct angle and then I'm going to use HCVC to figure out IT. Okay, so let's do that for a second. I've got 5.045 amps and it's at 75 degrees. So it's going to look something like this. This is the 5.045 at 75.96 degrees. Okay. And this four amps is actually lagging because I'm comparing all this to voltage, by the way. It is leading the voltage by 75, so it is counterclockwise or up. All right, this is 4.224, 4, 4 and it's lagging the current by 66, which means it actually sits down here or clockwise from the voltage, but I'm gonna move it tip to tail it's gonna look something like this, okay? And that is going to be the 4.224 at minus 66.04. Now the reason I had to make that negative, guys, is because if you don't, the trig will think it's up here, okay? If you leave that as a positive angle, the trig will think it's sitting up here because positive angles are up and I know that this current is lagging because it's got an inductor in it, it's down here. So in order to make the trig work, I gotta make this negative. And that's the only reason why I need to know if it's leading or lagging. It's so that I know whether to leave this angle alone or actually make it negative so the, tra the trig works out, all right? And so I always tell students, as soon as you've decided that it's lagging, in other words, if you, as soon as you notice that it's got an inductor in it, just put that minus sign there, okay? Because you're gonna need it, all right? Now, the last phaser here is this one right here, 2.971. 2.971, and it's sitting here at zero degrees, all right? And we're gonna add this up in a second, but on another video, okay? But what I want you to notice is that the resultant or I total, this is I total for the circuit guys. It is the sum of the three currents, okay? And it's gonna have a vertical component 
and it is going to have a horizontal component all right and in the next video I'm gonna calculate those both all right so come on back